Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'd like to give you all an update on my one month progress of going without a grocery store. So if you're new to the channel, um, I have been giving my family a challenge and myself a challenge of going one year without using a grocery store. So the goal is to be going to local farms and local farmers markets and growing myself all the ingredients that we are going to be using in our household. So, so far it's been going really well and I'd like to update everybody on what I have been doing for the past month to make this work. So, so far this month, I've been working on going through my stores of all the grains, flowers, oats, and all of that that I already have on hand before I focus on buying new and bringing new into the house. I have been also working on sourcing out where I can get my oats and grains from. I found a local Mennonite store that's about 10 minutes outside of town that carries all of these things. So once I work on getting those things out of my house that have per, uh, previously been purchased, I would, can go to that store and pick up those grains. So I'm happy that I had found those there and they're nice and local and from a local family. So as for fruits and vegetables, I still have a ton of fruits and vegetables that are canned or frozen. So my vegetables will probably run out first. I do have some still frozen. I do have a lot of canned carrots left, but I kind of have run out of other vegetables. So I'm hoping that these vegetables do last me until the first vegetables start to spread up in the ground. So we are waiting for some fiddleheads to come up and our asparagus as well as lettuce and kale. And so I'm, I'm just hoping that my frozen veggies last me through then and then we can start harvesting those and getting those from local farmers markets as well. My fruit, I have a ton of canned fruit left as well as frozen fruit from last year. So I'm definitely this summer and fall going to work on freezing a bit more fruit um, because we do do a lot of frozen popsicles and smoothies and uh, just frozen, my kids love to eat frozen berries. So I will work on doing some more of that as well as freezing and canning more vegetables to last us a little bit longer. So from this process, I have learned that that is something I do need to work on. So the sweeteners that we use are honey and maple syrup that I have here. We do get our maple syrup all the local farms around carry maple syrup so we can pretty much pick it up wherever as well as the honey comes from a local Mennonite farm as well. There's a store just outside of town that carries this honey as well as a lot of fresh apples as they have an apple orchard there so when I want fresh apples I just go to that store. So I have been sourcing my meat from a local butcher. She carries all pasture raised, heritage breed, grass fed meat so she has duck and turkey, pork, beef, everything. She also carries specialty hamburgers that she makes, which are lovely and delicious. So um, I'm really enjoying shopping at that butcher. It's also awesome because I can just order online and she will deliver it to my house that coming Friday. So that's an outing that I don't personally have to make, which is awesome. So she will just deliver the meat. So that's where I've been going for my local meat. And um, it's, awesome quality. It's just wonderful. So we've really been enjoying that meat. From her, we also get our fat so I can um, make lard out of that. Uh, so I got actual beef suet. So I turned my beef suet into a fat that I can use for cooking. So I rendered that down myself and now I have some nice grass fed suet that I can cook with. So lastly, we've got our dairy. So I get our dairy fresh from a farm, again, just outside of town, it's a Mennonite farm, and this milk and this yogurt is amazing. It has so much flavor and it just tops out any of the dairy that you can get at the store. This milk is typically milked that morning when I go to go get it, and I can get whatever dairy products I want from there. So they have milk, which is whole milk, it's not separated, um, but you can personally separate it yourself because it will separate and you can skim off the cream if that's what you wanna do, but we just leave it and it is so tasty. 
So we can get milk there, yogurt, kefir, butter, cheese, cream, anything else, uh, sour cream, we can get that there as well. And if there's other meat products that I want, they also sell meat and they sell produce in the summer. And this dairy is also grass fed, which I mean, finding that in the store is really hard. So the nutrients in these dairy products are just sensational. There's so much more nutrients in these dairy products than you could ever find in the store. So I'm really happy that we found this farm and I will definitely be continuing to go there. So to go over the pros and cons of going without the grocery store, I'm going to focus on the pros first because I think they're more important. And then I can go over the cons of what may come when you do go without the grocery store. So the pros are it's much fresher food. Normally when you buy from local, you're getting your food right out the butcher, right out the cow, um, fresh produce. And where when you're getting produce, especially from the grocery store, it's shipped from all over the world. There's apples in there from Africa. Like the freshness of that produce is very questionable um, as well as the nutrient value. So the freshness and um, the nutrient value of the produce and the meat and the dairy that you get from local farms far outweighs whatever you're going to get in the grocery store. So nutrients and freshness are definitely top priority for me. So these products, because of that, are also much better quality. So the quality of the products is much higher than anything you're going to get in the store as well. There's a lot less transportation because my products aren't being shipped all over the world just to come into my house. It is from farms within probably a hundred mile radius. Um, actually less than that because I don't drive that far to get them. Um, so it's way, way less transportation just to get these products to our table um, than what I would get from the grocery store. So it's a less of a carbon footprint for my family. So with these products, it's also much less waste. So with the milk and the dairy, you can see that I don't have the bagged milk and I don't have a container there. These glass containers will be returned to the farm. I'll wash them, clean them, return them to the farm, and then they will be filled again. So that's perfect for us because we're creating a lot less waste that way. Same with the vegetables. I don't have all the food packaging, especially if I'm growing them myself, I don't have any food packaging there. And when I'm going to farmers markets and stuff, I bring my own bags. So I do not have the waste associated with buying the, the produce and my milk. So a lot less waste for us, which is absolutely fabulous. So the cons for this, there's only a couple but I do have a few that might be a deterrent, but for me, I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons. So it's something I will definitely continue doing. So my cons are that it's a lot more time consuming for me because I'm going to multiple different places. So not only am I doing the butcher, which thankfully I can do from home and it is delivered, but then I'm going to a couple of different farms to source out vegetables, which I don't necessarily have to do right now. And I am hoping to get vegetables from where I get my dairy, but we'll see. Um, it may have to be a couple different farmers markets, but my dairy comes from a farm and then my grains will come from a different farm. And then it's possible that my fruit or, or fruit or vegetables might come from a different farm as well. So there is a couple of different places where I am driving around to, even though it's not a lot of driving, it's still more time consuming for me because again, it's not just one stop shop. So um, I still think that the pros outweigh this, but it is a bit of a con. So next, it's also more baking. So I'm baking my bread, I'm baking muffins for the kids for breakfast, I'm doing um, oatmeal balls for them as well. And it's just more baking instead of, you know, having those processed goods, but it's not processed, right? It's fresh baking instead of the processed goods. So I think that kind of outweighs each other there. But in the end, it is a little bit more time for me. This process is more time consuming. And lastly, it is more expensive. So unfortunately, as much as the quality is way better, you're paying for it. So the milk is much more expensive than if I would buy it at the store, almost a bit double. So 
if you're trying to do this frugally, maybe there's a way to shop around and find different farms. Um, I haven't quite gotten to that yet, but where I have found, uh, the, I'm paying for the quality. The quality is much better and I'm paying for it. So it is more expensive than just going and buying the cheapest meat at the grocery store or going and buying the cheapest dairy at the grocery store. Um, and I mean, typically my, my produce, when I grow it myself, is a lot less expensive and the produce that I can get in season is a lot more less expensive. So the produce itself isn't that, but the dairy and the meat is more expensive. So to, to discuss the zero waste bit, um, I kind of discussed that already that I do have a lot less waste, but it's not zero waste. So I have less waste in terms of dairy and in terms of food packaging. Um, I do not have less waste in terms of packaging for my meat, unfortunately. So even from the butcher, a lot of the meat that I get is shrink wrapped in plastic or it's wrapped in butcher paper. And it used to be that you could compost butcher paper, but unfortunately that butcher paper is now lined with plastic. So I cannot recycle it, nor can I compost it. So I have to throw that out because it is lined with plastic. So that is unfortunate, but it has, in the end, I am less waste. So not zero waste, but less waste. And as we are cycling through some of the products that we still have in the house, we are still um, contributing to that waste as well because I did have products that were packaged. So um, in the end, when we are fully functioning just on these products, it will be a lot less waste and my waste should only be coming from the butcher paper. So that is our current uh, situation and my one month update for how we are doing with going without the grocery store. So far I think it's fabulous and I am really enjoying the products but I am definitely trying to find better time management skills to make this work for myself. Anyways, I hope you guys are feeling motivated by this. If you are interested in following my journey on going without a grocery store for a year, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.